All right, folks, let's go ahead and get started. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Sorry for the slight delay. Just we had to work through a couple technical glitches, but we should be good to go now. Welcome to today's mainframe topology webcast. Um, before I hand you off to our team of presenters today, just a couple of things I need to cover. Uh, first, if you have questions during our session, and um, we always hope that you do, please use the questions box along the right-hand side of your screen, right under the GoToWebinar control panel to ask those questions and we'll get through as many of those as we can during our time together today. We do have a packed agenda, but if for some reason we can't get through all of our questions, I'll make sure that the team gets everything they need so they can follow up with you after. We are recording today's session, uh, which is why your lines are all muted. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, but the replay will be available probably later today or first thing tomorrow morning um, out in the communities, so look for it out there. So if you have someone you want to share it with or if you want to watch some part of it again, that's where you'll find it. And the last thing for me is that we are always trying to make sure these sessions are valuable. So with that in mind, I pulled together a quick survey that's going to pop up at the end. If you could stick around and give us some feedback, uh, we would all really appreciate it. That's it for me. So uh, take it away, Mikhail. Or whoever's, who's kicking us off? Sorry, I, I know we have a, a large group of people today. Len, uh, this is Rajesh. I will take it. All right. There you go, sir. Thank you, Len. Hello, everyone. We probably have customers and partners joining this call from different time zones. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you all. My name is Rajesh Mandava. I'm the product owner for IDMS. You all know Nakesha. She's a Datacom product manager. She's my co-host today. Uh, before I introduce our other panelists and turn it over to them to lead today's webcast, I would like to highlight the fact that both IDMS and Datacom product portfolios currently offer several integrations with other software products, both from Broadcom as well as third-party vendors. These integrations simplify development of your mainframe applications that use Broadcom databases and provide smoother workflows. Uh, currently, both IDMS and Datacom product teams are working on integrations with two Broadcom products, the integration with Smart Restart which enables restart functionality in your IDMS or Datacom applications to ensure business continuity in the event of errors or system failures. The second is the integration with HostBridge. It will allow in-place modernization of your existing IDMS or Datacom screen-based applications. Uh, we are always looking for product integration opportunities that provide comprehensive solutions and bring value to our customers. Now, let me introduce the three co-panelists today who will talk about system and application observability, introduce us to the Broadcom products, topology and alert central, and help us engage in discussions to identify potential opportunities for Broadcom databases in this observability space. First, I have Michael, uh, who is the product manager as well as product owner for topology. Matthias, he is the product manager for alert central. Machindra, he is the SME and the architect for alert central. Michael, I'll turn it over to you. The floor is yours. Thank you very much for the introduction, Rajesh. Uh, I welcome, appreciate the opportunity to speaking to all of you. Again, uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good, good evening from wherever uh, you are joining. I'm really excited uh, to introduce this, uh, this product to this audience, the mainframe topology. And we'll be looking uh, for some feedback from you, uh, whether you see this as a fit in, in this space. So mainframe topology is a fairly new product, especially in the mainframe space terms. It's been started uh, three years ago. This uh, May, it uh, celebrated its second birthday as a, as a GA product. So we're still fairly rapidly uh, developing it. And we are looking to potentially expand it to um, IBM as a datacom um, space. So we'll be presenting it as is. It uh, doesn't yet have any IBM as our data com support, but it's, um, it's the space we're looking, uh, looking to expand it to. So first, I'll do a little bit of introduction of what uh, mainframe topology is. So what we have started with is a challenge of people understanding how the environment is uh, connecting together. During one of the outages with our customers, our SMEs were on, uh, on premises and they worked uh, with the customer and we have noticed that they have spent hours or even days just writing on whiteboard charting how different pieces of infrastructure are talking to one another. 
in the hope that uh, it will help them address or identify the issue. So we figured we can do that programmatically. We can do that automatically, and that's how mainframe topology came to be. So the set of customer challenges are that this understanding of how the environment is put together is getting out of date. Even if you have any diagrams or any documentation, it's very difficult to maintain. That also means the learning curve for new employees is very steep. It's difficult to get somebody uh, to be able to be productive. And it's also any new employees will face this steep curve or wall uh, that they will find it very difficult to uh, self-explore. Uh, furthermore, whenever you are making any changes or deployments uh, to your environment, you need to analyze this impact and obviously the most prominent ones will be uh, will be widely known. There's always corner cases or some older pieces of, of the environment that uh, you know only the experts uh, might know about. And finally, uh, customers are facing challenges with none or only very manual update of um, of mainframe information in their change management or uh, ITSM systems. So that means whenever you are creating an issue or you are creating this change request, you don't have enough information to add a link to. And when you are searching for it in the future, that makes it makes it really difficult to find uh, what has changed or what has happened uh, with that infrastructure in the past. So that is what we are positioning mainframe topology as in the middle of this of the of, in the middle of the segment so we're trying to do infrastructure discovery automatically provide the data visibility uh, to the users to help them with the impact analysis and make uh, what we discover available to update for the change management and service management systems and what the product that we have actually built here are some core concepts so it is based on the SMF records so far. And now we know that that's, that we'll need to change if we, uh, if we will do the data com or IDMS. But the reason we have chosen SMF records for now is that it allows us to take this a longer, a longer term time span, longer term view. So imagine a situation where you have a bad job doing something maybe with a database or with a queue in one time of the day, perhaps overnight, and then you have transactions that will um, do something different with the same piece of your infrastructure at the market open hours or um, you know something similar. So you need to have a longer term time view to really understand your whole application end to end and what the different pieces are doing. Um, from the beginning, we have designed this to be cross domain. Right now, uh, we are supporting Kix DB to MQ and also WebSphere. We're in the process of adding uh, some more domains and we are hoping to keep extending it to cover uh, the entire mainframe eventually. We do want to use this cross-domain auto discovery uh, of data to support your application understanding to help you piece together how that whole application works from uh, the ingress points to the mainframe down to uh, the uh, individual resources. And uh, since this is a new product, it is a web-based application, but we also wanted to make it very easy to use and install deploy. So it runs 100% on ZOS. I'm going to move forward. Uh, we'll do an actual live demo in a moment, but I wanted to introduce uh, several different views that the topology supports right now. So starting on the left, what we call a hierarchical view will help you see uh, the organization of your elements. So how, for example, your Kix regions, DB2 subsystems, and communities and all are sitting inside the ZOS systems and ZOS systems in Sysplexes. Then, uh, what we call connected view allows you to trace uh, the dependencies and connections between various pieces of the applications. It could be transactions and queues or packages and transactions and so on. And the one on the right 
is a compact view. This is just the inversion of the connected view in case you are running a lot of uh, load balancing. It is sometimes useful to change perspective and put uh, the transaction on the top. So if your transaction is running in 20 different regions, uh, you can make it compact to just one box on the graph and emphasize uh, the business application view. This is a detailed view uh, for the connected view, how that is looking. So you can see it can uh, have quite a few things on the map, depending on how complex your environment is. Um, it allows you to highlight, so you can click on any um, element here in the map and you can see its immediate predecessor and successor. And also the organization is uh, from left to right. So all the outgoing connections are from the right side of each node and the incoming connections are into the left side of each node. And we're going to talk about how that view uh, works in a, in a little bit during the live demo. This slide is to give you all an architectural overview. So uh, mainframe topology is an independent installation. It can be deployed using the SMPE and it consists of a batch job process, uh, which processes the SMS data. It feeds the data into the database and we're running a single STC started task that runs uh, the API server and the web server. And from your web browser, you're connecting to this STC running on your system. For the database, we are using SQLite. And if you're not familiar with uh, SQLite, then it's uh, one of the most widely used uh, databases over in the world, maybe not on the mainframe, but essentially everywhere from airlines uh, to your smartphones. And it has uh, quite a few advantages, provided your application is small enough. And with topology, we're doing a heavy aggregation. So the resulting data is, is very small and it can fit into uh, what the SQLite can support. It's a file database, so it doesn't require any maintenance, any administration whatsoever. It's just a file that sits on your system and doesn't consume any resources until uh, it, is, it is needed. Here's an alternative way uh, to run topology. If you want to um, load balance the SMS processing, you can run it on uh, many multiple different LPARs, as many as, as you want to. And you can have one main uh, that will aggregate all the data into a single database. So this is just to parallelize uh, the load and make everything a little bit faster. One very interesting uh, integration with uh, topology is uh, change management database or uh, ServiceNow is one of the most uh, widely used uh, change management systems. So that allows you to keep uh, all your records up to date. So many times um, people are being asked by their managers, well, can you just populate our CMDB system with the mainframe components? Just write some scripts or something that uh, will generate all the records and we can keep it up to date. But it's not so, not so simple to do, but something like mainframe topology already has all the data required. Uh, so we can import it into ServiceNow and it can be, it can be used. Uh, what is available right now, we have Sysplex, LPAR, Kix, uh, DB2, and MQ. Uh, we have added even the detailed uh, records. So in case, you want to, uh, you can add transactions, individual packages or queues, though most customers typically uh, decide to, to stay on the component level. Uh, we also can discover some hardware information which might be handy uh, to use in, inside service now, like uh, serial numbers or the model numbers, number of CPs on its systems and uh, so on. Uh, right now the integration is done through CSV, which is a big advantage that can be used in any CMDB system, not just ServiceNow, but in the future, uh, we are planning to have an API integration as well. And this is how that works. 
you start from mainframe topology, you have the batch process that uh, we have mentioned before, that is feeding the SQLi database. You run an export, um, it will export all the data in CSVs, and those can be imported into ServiceNow. Uh, that step is uh, done in, uh, in two sub-steps. First, you just import uh, the data into ServiceNow, and then you need to tell ServiceNow uh, how to map the schema to ServiceNow schema, because they already have tables created for most um, IBM mainframe components. They will have tables for Zero systems, for WebSphere, MQs, and everything else. You need, need to tell uh, ServiceNow how it maps, and also uh, what are the relationships. So you want to place uh, your databases under uh, Zero systems, for example, if uh, that is what you want to see. So that is uh, that is done by a really really sm small script that uh, we are also providing in our documentation. So I've been promising a live demo, so let me jump to that uh, right now. I hope everybody can can see my browser. We can. So this is perfect. Thank you, Len, for confirmation. So this is mainframe topology application. As I have said, it is running inside a browser. And uh, this is on our on our demo data uh, from inside Broadcom. So it's a small system. We have one Sysplex defined with uh, three systems. And then you can expand any node here and see what it is running inside. So from here, I can immediately see that we have three different Kix regions. We have one database in, in here, DBA1. Well, we have two databases, DBA1 and DB01. And we have one MQ manager. I can open uh, Kix region, for example, to see transactions that are running inside or uh, the DB2 system. Inside the DB2, we have plans. And inside plans, there are packages. And we can see connections. So if my question is, tell me which uh, connections this one package has, you can go here and open the uh, connected view. Make this a little bit smaller. And from the connected view, this is my package I have selected. I will be able to determine uh, what is calling this package. So as I was as I was saying, the incoming connection to the left side of the node. You can, you can highlight that I can see that it is being called from this APPL transaction on this one region. And this APPL transaction is uh, actually calling both of the packages here. It's also jumping to CSMI. You can see it trace the, the blue highlight. And it's also jumping here to this FRCH transaction and then to a database, uh, database package here. I will be exploring a little bit uh, what, is all, what this all means. But for now, just notice this naming conventions, that there are things on the map that start with CC. Also in the package name, you have CC and the queue name. So this is an application uh, called credit card. If I go back uh, to the hierarchical view, you'll be able to create a filter uh, to show just this one application. So in here, in filters, um, I can select an application, just filter to the credit card, and it is going to only show me the elements that are part of this application. Uh, my application is also running both production and test environments. So I'm only going to show production. Uh, it's going to filter away the system three. So I know this credit card in production is only running on two systems, sys one and sys two. Coming back to this view, we can trace it further, our application. So let's imagine you are going to have a problem with your credit card application and you'll start investigating what is happening. So you can see the connections. My database is being called from these packages that we have seen. There is a queue, so we can further click and let's say we want to explore how the connections looks from the perspective of the queue. So we can go there by clicking on the ellipses. 
Um, and in case we don't want to see this level of detail and we want to only see connections between the components, then I can collapse the MQ manager and just click here and only see the MQ manager connections to the regions. I can see it's communicating with this PAOR01 region and also a region here on the um, on a different different system. Uh, that doesn't really help me resolve my problem, what is happening with this application. So we can go to a more detailed view, what we call a relationship explorer. And this is more tabular view. Some of you might uh, might like this, this a little bit more because it's going to give you uh, much more detail, much more control over what is happening. So I can see my queue is being utilized from two different regions. But let's uh, explore what else is running on the system. So my queue manager, I have four different queues and let's uh, try to learn a little bit more about them. So we can see uh, what the operator's IDs are being used. Uh, from here, we can see the user IDs. Uh, and let's do something uh, more interesting. So we can explore the coupling facility structures or page sets. And from here, notice there's a page set number two. So let's see which of these queues are sharing them. And now we can see our credit card application is sharing a page set with a different queue. There's doing something with the databases. Notice DB201 to DBA1, and we can, we're going to explore that a little more. So I'm going to create a filter, and we can see from inside this relationship explorer uh, what, this, what this queue does. So you can see the different connection types and we see it only does batch. So let's see the batch connections. All right. And there are two, one is putting things in onto the queue and one is getting information to queue. So DB01 and the other one DBA01. So we need to explore the databases to find out more what is happening on our system. So you can change context to the DB2 connections and here we can see in our uh, in our subsystem, this is db01 and dba1. So let's try to find out uh, what these databases are doing. So from inside, uh, we can see the packages in the plan. These are the two packages we were looking at before. We'll be able to determine what again authorization IDs are being used or what are the connection types. And this is only being called from KIGS. So all this database does is, is work with the KIGS to fulfill the credit card application. Um, we'll need to take a look at the other database uh, to find out more um, about our problem. So I'm going to remove the filter and start from scratch from the other one. And this one on the connection type, we'll be able to see a remote unit of work. Well, what remote unit of work means it's a DRDA. So in DRDA information, notice this, uh, what we'll be able to find out. This DB2JCC, this is an IBM code for a JDBC driver. So this is a modern application, could be Java or Python. It is connecting to our database. This is giving me the IP address that is being used and the authorization ID. And if I know the naming conventions from the authorization ID, I can guess this prod means production and BI means business intelligence. So somebody created a business intelligence application. They have created a copy of the database. So DBA1 is just a copy to serve uh, for this business intelligence application of our main mainframe database. And they wanted to shield the production load, but they forgot uh, that they are, the queues are sharing the page set. So even though the applications are shielded, the entire application can come crashing down because the, the queues that are copying the database are just uh, sharing the page set. So I've created, can take a look here how that application looks. So the two batch jobs we have seen are just reading the logs and copying the information over. Now, because they would be reading the logs, you will not be able to see them in the SMF data. You, you wouldn't uh, see them 
anywhere. You cannot uh, cannot piece it together on a graph, but the topology still provides you enough information to piece together uh, what is happening. Right. So this was a quick taste of the types of information uh, that you will be able to find both in the graphical view to find how different components have dependencies on each other and also in the relationship explorer on the uh, level of detail you'll be able to find and, and piece the information together uh, what is happening on your system and how things are connecting connected together i'll continue uh, with the presentation start my slideshow and the the last few slides are going to be dedicated to the roadmap so what you've seen uh, already we are supporting some uh, level of tagging and then filtering for the business applications so we want to uh, want to support you more in uh, connecting things together to help you form the business applications and understand uh, the application workflow so this would be an example something that we have seen uh, on the screen that you can tag different things perhaps based on rules based on naming conventions or uh, if needed manually but but hopefully you can utilize the rules and we have support for you to to write those rules as a as a JCL, and then you can convert them to tag and create these uh, business applications type of views. Um, other pieces that we have on the roadmap is create the hotspots on the topology maps that uh, we're going to cover today as well to cover the ingress points into the mainframe. So not just the web sphere, but also things like ZOS Connect, Kix Transaction Gateway and others to show how the information is flowing into the mainframe and allow you more export options, visualize the Kix Plex or do the program chain or jobs and uh, resources. Lastly, what uh, you can do, uh, you can put us to the test so if you would be willing to share any data, we'll be able to present it back to you, do a playback. Uh, we don't need a full day of the data or too much of your data. Typically 45 minutes, sometimes even less is uh, going to be enough to show what uh, topology can discover on your environment. Uh, what we do need if you are going to share more information or more SMF types, the, those needs to be from the same time period so we can piece them together. And as a last uh, last slide in my section, we have this little poll. So Len, can you uh, run the poll in the webinar? We would like to know if you found this interesting or valuable, if you would uh, like to cooperate uh, with us and see this uh, being extended to IDMS on Datacom. Yep, so I, I just launched that poll. It takes a few seconds to distribute and then we'll uh... We'll leave it open for a few seconds so everyone can vote. Perfect. Well, let's uh, end. While that is going on, let's end my section. So thank you very much for listening uh, to the mainframe topology piece of the presentation, for giving us your attention. So for voting in the poll, I'll be uh, giving voice to Mateus, who's going to continue with uh, our central. All right, so people are still voting, so we'll leave it open for another 10 seconds or so. All right, so thank you very much, everybody everyone who voted. Um, Mateus, do you, uh, I'm assuming that means that you, you need control of the screen? Yeah, so let me share. Okay. Can you see my screen? Not yet. It doesn't look like you're sharing quite yet. You have control okay. now, though. Yeah. Hold on. Let me just one second. Uh... Okay. Can you see you now? Yes. Okay. All right. Perfect. So, hello, everybody. Uh, nice to meet you. My name is Mateus Milani, and I'm the product manager for Alert Central. 
So to get started, I want to take the same flow as uh, Mikal and talk a little bit about our problem statement. So when we talk about Alert Central and we talk about alert management, we like to look into who are the personas that are involved into this process. And uh, here you can see we have the level one operator. His name is Ashton. And Ashton has the responsibility to monitor all the alerts that are coming on the environment. However, when you look into the role of the operator, they're not only responsible to monitor those alerts and highlights that are coming, but he needs to deal with a lot, other, a lot of other information and actions to make sure that he can drive those problems to the resolution. So when we look into the operator's life, it's not easy. So the operator needs to deal with all the alerts coming from different systems, from different sysplexes and take actions on them. Most of the times the operator will be responsible to look into their documentation and analyze if there are any comments that need to be issued to do some initial troubleshooting or even engage the level two team or contact them using uh, chat instant uh, applications or sending pagers or making phone calls. They needed to access the mainframe to issue some commands, navigating to tools. They need to open instants in ITSM tools like ServiceNow and all of that. So there's a lot on the operator bucket. They needed to not only do all of this at the same time, but handle many problems at the same time. We know the problems on the mainframe, they will not happen uh, once per time, but they will always happen multiple problems at the same time. They needed to do a very good prioritization on the problems that they are looking right now. So they will probably work on all the critical and important alerts first and then leave the low severity ones uh, for later. The real, the real challenge here, it's not only collecting all this information, but how to find all that information. So you needed to, to hunt information across the system. So usually the operator, they need to have user IDs and pass passwords across multiple products because some pieces of the troubleshoot will be done inside the mainframe, some others will be done outside of the mainframe. So deal with different platforms, different tools, it's very time consuming. It can really slow down the problem resolution. Also, one of the main responsibilities for the operator is to make sure that they transfer or hand over the problem for the resolver teams. In some organizations, the operators, they are responsible to identify the problem, take some initial look at, uh, at it, uh, execute some commands, do some troubleshoot, but in the end of the day, who is going to be who is going to resolve those problems will be the level two team. So the level two team, they will be experts on um, IDMS, Datacom, CICS, DB2, ZOS, or automation, whatever. And problems can happen in the middle of the night. So imagine when we are having a problem in the middle of the night and the operator in identifies a problem and they call the level two support and 2 a.m. They, they will need to wake up, get into a bridge, and start investigating the problem from scratch. So doing a problem handover, it's really key when we are talking about alert management process. So with Alert Central, we want to show you that we can also tackle that challenge and make sure that we can not only consolidate all the alerts across your environment in one single place, but we can also uh, collect information in automated way from different sources of the environment. And that will save times, not only from the operators to do the initial analysis, but also for the level two team to start investigating the problem. Today, we know, as I mentioned, that we needed to hunt this information to troubleshoot problems across different parts of the environment. So really want to make sure that we are gonna save your time to get that information and take the problems to res resolution in a quicker way. Looking to all these challenges, um, we want to introduce to you Alert Central. So Alert Central, same as Topology, has been around for around one year and a half or almost two years. And uh, we like to say that Alert Central, as I mentioned, it's not only about consolidating alerts, but uh, getting data around those alerts. Of course, we bring the concept of uh, pane of glass of alerts, 
And that means that you can look into all the alerts coming from one single screen. You can define uh, the priority and the groups that will receive those alerts uh, based on their severity, based on their problem. You can take some quick actions like changing severity. You can assign it to other groups. You can access information from QuickRef, from Alert Central. And you can also have some links to topology to see how the components are integrated to each other. But one of the key differentiators for Alert Center is really when we are talking about historical information and contextual uh, information. So we are using APIs and reaching out to APIs from different products to make sure that we can grab the information, information from those products and bring it in context into Alert Central. We are going to show a little bit more during the demo, but I want to highlight there are some uh, key uh, products that we are consuming APIs from them. So for example, uh, Ops MVS, we are able to gather uh, information from the Ops log. So we know that operators, when they are troubleshooting a problem, the first place that they will go is to the log to identify any other message that, that might be related to the problem. So we are bringing all the Ops log information in context into Alert Central. We are able to get information from SysView and bring some alert insights. So we are talking about the metrics related to CICS, DB2, IMS, MQ, and many others, and also anomaly detection. So we have one of the Broadcom components, the uh, MOI, that can bring uh, machine learning information. We are also able to bring anomaly detection information uh, and alerts uh, into Alert Central. So as I mentioned, uh, we know that in the market today, we can find multiple products that they can do uh, alerting consolidation. But here we are really exploring all the expertise around mainframe that we have, and we want to accelerate the problem resolution. We want to make sure that we are grabbing and gathering all the data for you, and then you're going to be able to use that information to accelerate your problem resolution. Before we jump into the live demo, uh, when Mashidra will uh, show you how you can solve a problem using Alert Central, uh, in a nutshell, I just want to talk about th this architecture. And uh, I like to say the Alert Central, it's, it's pretty much composed by three main components. So the first one, as you can see on the bottom, we have the Alert Central that can run on a Linux x86, on a Z Linux, on the X39X. Uh, so that where Alert Central will be installed, so off-platform. Also, there is a second piece called Zoe API Mediation Layer. Uh, probably you are familiar with Zoe uh, as part of the open source uh, program. So here we are leveraging the Zoe API Mediation Layer, not only to control all the authorization and authentication into the product, so you can use your mainframe TSO ID to use Alert Central, but we are using an API gateway where you can uh, control all your APIs and, and, and manage all of them from one single place. Because as I mentioned, so we are getting data from different products and bringing them in context. So we needed to have this Zoe API ML to make sure that you can uh, concentrate that all in one single place. You might ask like, okay, it's a Zoe API ML, so it means that I, I needed to rely on the community to get support and all of that, but that's not the case for Alert Central. Here at Broadcom, since we are using uh, API mediation layer as part of our products, you can have the full support. So if you are facing any problems during the installation configuration of usage of the Zoe API ML in the Alert Central context, you can go to our uh, technical support page. You can open uh, the level one cases. You're going to have an entire team ready to support you on that. And the third part of the Alert Center is what we call the Alert Central Connector. So the Alert Central Connector, or ACC for short, it's used to really translate the message coming from different products, sending through API ML and getting to Alert Center to the operators. So the Alert Central Connector provides this out of the box ability to standardize the different ways that the alerts are coming and send it to Alert Central. So there are some products that today, they have a direct integration with Alert Central and they are using uh, the Alert Central connector. So we are talking about OpsMVS, we are talking about SysView, we're talking about NetMaster, 
all those products, they have options inside their tools that will allow you to choose as an option to send alerts into Alert Central. Also, we are talking about some off-platform products such as Automation Point and MOI that they have also integrations with Alert Center. You can send alerts in uh, through them. Uh, but you, you may ask else like, okay, I don't have 100% of my environment composed by Broadcom products. I have some other Broadcom products that are not listed on the screen, or I may have other vendor products products. How do I send the alerts to Alert Central? So we have some utility that's called CAAC Send. So this utility will help you to send the alerts from any product to Alert Central. So regardless of the vendor or regardless of the product, you can call that utility and the utility will be responsible to forward that alert to Alert Central through the Zoe API mediation layer. And finally, we have an optional uh, component that is called NIMSM. NIM SM, it's our integration with ITSM tools. So it means that with Alert Center, you can create auto instant, for example, into ServiceNow. Uh, and this is the model that you can use it to make the bridge. So it will allow you not only to choose to send an alert to ServiceNow, for example, but it will also send the instant number back so your operators can keep track on what's going on with the environment. And finally, from an entitlement perspective, so today Alert Central is available for you as part of Ops MVS and the CISVIEW package. So you can go into the additional download page of those products and there are uh, no additional cost on using uh, Alert Central. So you, if they are uh, listed already into your entitlements, you can just go download and install on your environment. Now, let me hand over to Mashindra, who is our architect, uh, and he can show a little bit more on how Alert Central works in a real life scenario. So, Mashindra, back to you. Thank you, Matthias. Um, can you confirm if you can see my screen? We see your I Gmail. Yep. Awesome. All right. So, um, today I'm going to act as a system performance engineer. And as a system performance engineer, in my email box, I got a ticket from ServiceNow. And the ticket says, the CICS is under stress. Oh no, short and storage above 16 uh, MB. And uh, ServiceNow uh, URL has been provided. So I can actually go to the ServiceNow and from there I can descend down to Alert Central. That's the URL that it will embed into ServiceNow ticket. So I will short circuit and directly go to Alert Central. So from ServiceNow ticket, I go to Alert Central, and now I'm looking at this CICS under stress. Um, alert has been reported, and in the alert details view, I get to see related alerts. So the first thing that comes to my mind is, hey, if this alert is uh, occurring uh, recently, what happened to this alert? Did it, that, uh, did it occur in the past? So this particular panel above, uh, it shows me uh, the past history of similar alert for last seven days. Now I see that this alert has been happening on say September 5th, September 6th, September 8th, um, and this has been reported as a major, and this is reported uh, on a particular system and particular resource. The resource here is the CICS region. OICICST1. Now, as a seasoned uh, system performance engineer, uh, I probably uh, is aware of this short and storage message, but if you don't, don't worry. Alert Central will provide some supporting information, a quick ref, which is handy here explaining what this message is all about. Um, then it is also talking about what action one can provide, what user action can be provided. Um, so all these details are uh, quickly accessible through that alert event itself. And if you look at this additional properties, it actually shows me who actually reported this alert. So in this case, looks like AppSMUS has actually uh, collected this event from US US system where the CICS region is running. And all the details of where this uh, event is actually being uh, reported from are provided here in those uh, additional properties. 
now I get to see that this particular alert event has occurred on this particular CICS region, OICICSD1. I can also look at the partial match matches of this particular message, or I can actually look at uh, on this CICS region whether any other alerts are happening or not. Uh, I can go down to this uh, the ZOS system level, or perhaps I can go to uh, the Sysplex level. All these details are provided right here. So that gives me an idea that whether this is unknown unknown issue or it is known known issue, is that happening in the was it happening in the past and that kind of stuff. Now I'm speaking in IDMS. Um, and data com webinar so I sh you should be wondering hey why are you talking about cics region um, that's the uh, actually alert that i have on this demo system but i'm going to show you how it might look like when you get actually idms events captured by uh, ops mvs so i went to alerts view and you get to see all those idms events actually captured by ops mvs and reported to me uh, one of them is reported by the machine learning module it's about real storage perhaps i can click on this and then look at the details about this stuff and i can go to this machine learning highway huh so looks like on one of my zos system the idms job is running and the job uh, real storage metric by the machine uh, has been actually processed by the machine learning and it's showing that this particular alert is reported on that particular um, uh, job now from IDMS, let's switch back to our original story. So we were looking into the CICS short and storage. Now I would like to do the next step as um, alert diagnostic is to find out the logs around that particular alert. So I can click on this log history, which is going to bring up the ops log around that alert event of CICS short and storage. And it's going to present right here on the screen without me leaving this console. So I can scroll down and you, you can notice as an action, you will see that again, the quick rep is um, accessible right next to the message, which is nice. So I can scroll down here and I can see the highlighted message. So this is the uh, event which was reported by Ops MVS about the short and storage. And you can see that you can access all the Ops log around that particular event right here in the log history. Now I know about this particular log. Perhaps I would like to see, is this short and storage impacting my transactions? And most importantly, why is this short and storage? So perhaps I'm looking for some kind of a metrics around that particular uh, time. So I can go to the alert insight and um, I get to see all the details around uh, that particular time automatically fetched and represented here uh, as part of that alert event. So I get to see the region summary here. Uh, the CICS transaction rate is being uh, shown here so that I know whether this SO has, has created any problem with the transaction rate or not. I can see the CICS uh, CPU time, a bend rate, uh, dynamic storage, uh, as well as active tasks. Perhaps I can drill down into active tasks and see who are those uh, CICS transactions uh, possibly uh, impacting my uh, storage. So I, I get to see a lot of CPIH transactions right here, which is possibly indicating that these pipeline CICS transaction uh, might be the cause of my uh, short and storage problem. Um, okay, now I, I came to know about um, the, the possible uh, symptom, the possible um, CICS transaction, which is causing short and storage. Next thing I would like to see is, why this CPIH is being executed and what's, what it is connected to. So the next step that I would like to do is drill down into topology. And Mikhail talked about the topology. So it is connected here in context. You can see that the CICS region um, for which this short and storage alert was reported is shown to be connected with the DB2 subsystem. And you can see that the outstanding event alert events are being shown on the top of it so that hotspotting is telling me a story that hey look there is something going on with the cics region and look there are there is something going on with the db2 as well and that lets me actually drill down further 
So I can click on this and go to this uh, alerts associated with the DB2 so that I can start looking into DB2 area. What's going on right here? So in in nutshell, what we are getting here is something what we call in the monitoring called blast radius. That means if the alert is reported, I would like to see the surrounding information right in context. And that's what you see on the screen with the topology. So I can go down to uh, the DB2 area now and I see, oh, there are a lot of alerts being reported in the DB2. And one of the alert is very interesting. So here, uh, this this alert is reported on the DB2. Uh, I can take a look at the quick rec again, and it says uh, a plan has been denied an IRLM lock because of a timeout. Hmm. And then if I look at the details about it, it says that uh, the the name of the uh, executing plan is provided as a plan name in the first um, field, and the correlation field provides you the the associated um, a, the correlation ID uh, provides you the associated CICS transaction. So if I close this quick ref and if I look at the message, I see the plan name, uh, I see uh, the correlation ID here, and I see the junk mail. Aha! So I know this junk mail happens to be a CICS transaction, and it is not supposed to be running right now, and it is running and it is invoking a DB2 lock. And that is uh, because of that, a lot of CICS transactions are stuck. Eventually it is going to lead to short end storage. It is going to lead uh, to impact on my CICS transaction. So I would like to take an action and that quick action, if I had to take, maybe I have to open up my emulator, uh, connect with that particular system, talk to the DB2 and invoke some commands. Uh, is it possible to do that right in the screen? And that's what we're going to do. Uh, if you look at this console, I already executed uh, some of these commands to take the corrective measures. And if you if you're looking at the screen, you see that that I initially I said, hey, show me the threads uh, on this particular DB2 subsystem, and it actually came up with the thread dump, and you can see there is a junk mail. Perfect. Now we we got our culprit. Now I can say is that cancel this junk mail or take appropriate action as you uh, see fit. And I see that junk mail cancel command is accepted. And eventually I uh, reconfirm this by issuing yet another command to display the thread dump. And I don't see this junk mail anymore. So that way we kind of went from identifying an issue uh, and looking at the impact of it and then eventually taking a corrective measures in uh, in a one workflow. So if I have to summarize this in um, in a minute, we went from CICS transaction, we looked at the alert insights and related alerts. We also looked at the logs around the same time. We looked at the topology blast radius and we went to the uh, MVS command and issued some commands to take the corrective measure. That's about it, uh, Mathis. All right, thanks, Mac. So, Mashindra, thank you very much for the demo. And um, now, just to um, end our uh, presentation here, just wanted to talk a little bit more about additional uh, components and features that we are working as part of Alert Central. So, you could see in our demo already how we are using uh, hotspots uh, from topology. So that's a very interesting integration and we are getting a lot of good feedback from customers. So this is something that we are uh, also planning to release in the upcoming uh, versions of Alert Central, but we were already uh, to show you how it works, uh, considering that we are already developing this. So this is really nice to have a, a broader view across a business impact or even impact across different components uh, on your environment. So you stop looking into problems in an isolated way and you see how one problem might be affecting other pieces of your environment. And also there is a, a lot of other items that we are working as part of the Alert Central Roadmap. As you can see, all the items in development they are marked as completed. That, that's because we just released a new version. So uh, the team is picking up new work, uh, but as you can see, we have a lot on our backlog 
uh, to continue moving forward. So there is um, different uh, uh, features uh, like uh, containerization, security enhancements, integration with operators documentation, more alerting sites. As you could see, alerting sites are our key uh, differentiator. So we have uh, plans to enhance those insights for uh, capacity problems, networking problems, uh, batch problems, and all of that. So really to make sure that we can use Alert Central as this consolidated way to gather information across problem uh, from different sources of your environment. So if you like it, Alert Central, but you don't see one specific feature here that would be very important to you and you would like to partner to us, you have this opportunity as well. So we have our validation program. The validation program is where we are discussing all the different features and components that are part of our roadmap. So you can have an um, early access to that information. You have this great opportunity also to influence on the roadmap. So there is a couple of meetings that we schedule with customers when we show not only items that are in development, but we also talk about the future statement in details. So you will have the opportunity to give your feedback and to influence the roadmap uh, partnering with us. So if you are interested in participating, there is a link on the screen. We're gonna be sharing um, all this information. Uh, feel free to join. We'd love to have you there and listen to your feedback and uh, walking with this journey with us. And with that said, uh, we came to the end um, of our Alert Central presentation. So thanks for your time, for listening, um, myself and Mac, um, about Alert Central. Looking forward to hear from you in the future. Thanks, Matthias. Uh... So Rajesh or Nikisha, you, you guys have anything to wrap up? We we are, we are one minute past time already, so we should definitely. Uh, do we have another? Len, do, do we have another poll? Uh, we do. To talk about. Uh, uh, talk about Alert Central. Yes, up? yes, I, I will do that right now. And we we do apologize for going over a little bit today, but we are pretty close to on time, so we'll we'll launch this. All right, people are starting to vote. We did have several people drop off at the top of the hour, so we may not have great response to this, but we'll leave it for another 10 seconds or so. Len, do we have any questions from the participants? There are, no, there are not any questions in the questions box. Okay. All right, so that I'm gonna close the poll. Um, Rajesh, you have any, anything you wanna mention in closing? Just wanted to thank uh, uh, Michael, Matthias, and uh, Chindra for the presentation and all our participants for joining the webcast today. Uh, your comments and feedback are very important to us and also participating in the poll. It will give us to sense the pulse as well as help us uh, in uh, setting the direction for the roadmap and prioritizing our product roadmap too. Uh, please reach out to Nakesha, Sheila, uh, Dale, and I uh, in case you have any questions about this potential uh, possible integration with Alert Central and topology. And thank you all. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.